So I started delving into the world of mechanical keyboards just about a month ago. And man, I can now understand how this hobby swallows you whole the moment you buy your first customizable keyboard. Once you're in, you start reading through switches, lubes, cases, and even those expensive keycaps. But I have to say, even if it's one of the most expensive hobbies on the internet, the satisfaction and sense of accomplishment you get when building your own custom is well worth it. So in this episode, I'll introduce you to the world of keyboards and I'll show you how I built my first custom mech, the KBD Fans 75V2, and the pieces I used to build it. So let's go. What is happening folks, my name is Marvin Gray and today we'll take a step back from photography and talk about this hobby that's huge right now, which is building a custom keyboard. So if you're into that, subscribe to this channel now, hit that notification bell to get the latest. You can also subscribe to my newsletter at link.marvingray.com slash newsletter. All right, so I entered the world of customizable keyboards just about a month after I bought up and assembled my photo and video editing rig behind me. I went on and researched the best keyboards and mice I could find and stumbled upon a Reddit thread that talks about mechanical keyboards and customization. I guess you already have an idea of what happens next. I started lurking on Facebook groups and Reddit threads looking for that endgame desktop setup. If you're not familiar with the term endgame, it's usually common in the keyboard scene and pertains to finding your own final setup. Of course, we all know the endgame does not exist. Fast forward to a few subreddits, YouTube videos, and articles later, I finally chose a keyboard setup and went with the silver anodized KBD Fan 75V2 that features a 75% keyboard layout because of the availability of the function keys. In case you're not familiar with the keyboard scene, there are several keyboard layouts like the Compact 60%, which has 61 keys. You also have the 65% layout, which goes around 66 to 68 keys depending on the layout and has arrow keys. Then we have the 75% layout, which is just a notch up above the 65% and has function keys and typically has 80 to 84 keys. Next is the TKL or 10 keyless layout, which has 87 keys and lacks a numpad. And then of course you have the full size keyboard or full size layout, which has 104 keys, which contains the function row and the numpad. And this is also the most common keyboard you'll see in establishments and offices and of course consumer stores. I'm sure there are still some more I may have missed. If you know more, help me out and let me know in the comments below. Who knows, maybe I can make more content about those in the future too. Anyway, after all this research, I finally went on and clicked that checkout button after doing that add to cart thing every now and then just to keep that urge to buy and build away for a while. I gotta say, it was kind of therapeutic, but it turns out it was a really good choice for a first full custom. I say full custom because it doesn't just involve choosing keycaps and switches and lubing them. It involved a lot of soldering. To top that off, since it was my first build and I wasn't planning on spending for another keyboard, I wanted to go all in and bought some Milmax sockets online. Milmax soldering was an entirely different experience, especially for a first timer. So the plan was to build a quieter keyboard that felt a lot more premium. So I swapped out all the components I could for brass. And though I had to pay more, the extra weight made it feel a lot less hollow and a lot more premium. I also read that brass plates helped dampen the sound, so it was in line with the plan. For switches, I wanted to go for something that had a bump when pressing down, since I was planning on using this as a typing keyboard, and I was having issues with using linear switches because it registered my key presses a lot quicker. It made me prone to mistyping all the time, but then again, maybe I just suck at typing. But the added bump of the tactile switches made it more appealing to my taste. I also considered availability when choosing switches as I didn't want to go through the trouble of finding them online. If one pops up while browsing, then great. And with that plan in mind, my first choice was the Zeal PC Silence V2 from a local distributor called Rotobox. This had great feedback and reviews, so I was sold easily. One trouble I had with this switch was with Milmax sockets. I did break a couple of pins trying to put the Milmax sockets on a few switches. I tried different techniques like soldering the Milmax sockets first, then inserting or twisting the sockets on the bigger leg, and it still doesn't go through all the time, but only on several switches. 
According to some Reddit threads, you'd have to send a bigger leg. And in another thread, someone just managed to slide into Melmax sockets with just a little bit of force. So really, I think it's a hit or miss with Xylance. I found a helpful video from Key Bonbon about soldering Milmax sockets, and in that video, he created a list of switches and their level of difficulty when mounting them. Link is in the description. I wish I had known that before I bought the Xylans. With that, I came across some Kiwis in the local marketplace, and I read that they didn't have any issues with Milmax sockets, so I got them. But I didn't like the louder sound it produced compared to the Xylans. So I made use of what I have, and you guessed it. I Franken-switched the Xylan stem with a Kiwi housing and ended up with the Uro switch. Well, why not? Because... So I swapped them. And this is just because the Xylan's V2 doesn't fit the Melmax sockets. I didn't want to spend more, so I lubed them with Crytox 203 Grade 0, filmed them using Deskies films, and the springs were lubed with GPL 105. After swapping them, I have to say it was quite satisfying. Very expensive Franken switching, but quite satisfying. I don't recommend doing it unless you're willing to spend a lot for the color and the function. If not, the Zeal PC Silence V2 is an excellent choice. Compared to stock Xylance, the Uro switch was more tactile, but was a lot quieter. I like the smoothness of the Uro switch compared to the Kiwis and the Xylance, and with some tactility, it was the sweet spot for me. So overall, I was satisfied. For stabs, I used clear Duroc PCB mount stabilizers, lubed with Crytox 205 grade zero, and dielectric grease for the wires. I also bought some stab foams from KBD fans used for Band-Aid mods. Before anything else, I had to test the PCB to make sure that everything was working. Once that was good, then I started screwing in the stabs. The kit also had an option of adding up a case foam for sound dampening. On top of that, I also got some plate foams for additional sound dampening and gives keystrokes a deeper sound. When soldering Milmax sockets, I had to attach them to the legs of the switch and solder them. It wasn't as difficult as I imagined, but it did take a little bit of getting used to. Once you solder a few switches, you'll find that your soldering job slightly improves switch after switch. Word of caution though, make sure the switches can be removed after soldering so you won't have any issues when you want to try out a different switch. I did have to desolder a few switches because the solder went inside the socket hole and was stuck to the switch. It was quite difficult using the solder sucker, especially if the solder is inside the socket. You'll also have to pull it out simultaneously. I didn't damage any switches in the process, so we're good. Now, after putting everything together, the icing on the cake was the brass weight at the bottom, and then of course, the keycaps. The keycaps I used was the EPBT Kuroshiro and was sold through the KBD fans website. Now, I wasn't able to join the group buy for this since it happened earlier this year and I've only been on the hobby for about a month. So I bought this at an aftermarket price, which is significantly higher than its group buy price. Now, group buys enable the maker and the manufacturer to sell at slightly lower price, but with limited stock, sometimes by count or by duration of the group buy. Another caveat is, of course, the waiting time. Now, production time for most group buy items usually take three to four months at a minimum, and can last to about eight months to a year, and sometimes even more. Now, if you miss out on an item, you'll have to buy it at an aftermarket price that is usually 50 to 70% higher, sometimes even double if you really want it. The KBD Fan 75 V2 is supported via QMK software where you can program the keys and other functions. I replaced the pause key with a delete key and mapped the second layer for PC controls and RGB lighting. 
I had to do some research on how to do this, but it's fairly easy. You can check out the tutorial via the KBD Vance product page or check out the video by Mech Merlin on the QMK tutorial using the QMK toolbox. Video link in the description. Now with all the parts in, the keyboard weighs about two kilos, which is the heaviest keyboard I've ever handled, but the weight adds to its appeal. I also like the RGB side glow it has since it matches up with my PC, especially since I like working in the dark. Since I work nights, I prefer the typing sounds to be as low as possible, and this keyboard definitely delivered. Check this out. Now I did end up spending a lot for this keyboard because I had the end game in mind, so you can just customize the components based on the needs and your budget. Now as of October 2020, the cost of the keyboard kit from KBD Fans is $189 US for the brass plate and an additional $10 US for the PCB phone. That's a total of $199 US. You can get it on an aluminum plate without the foam for about $159. The brass weight is an additional $29 US. The module foam costs $20 US. I paid an additional $2 for the stabilizer foam stickers, which I used for the Band-Aid mod. The Milmax sockets cost about 10 US. And for an extra $35, you can get a carrying case. The Xylance V2 switches cost about 700 pesos per 10 switches, which is around 14 US. I got around 100, so that's about 140 US. Aftermarket prices are cheaper with mainstream switches, so you can get it slightly cheaper at mech market or local groups. The Kiwis, just for the sake of this build, cost about 100 US for 100 pieces. That's about 240 US for both lots of 100 pieces of each switch to build the Franken switch. Again, you can just opt for the cheaper switches, it's completely up to you. The keycaps cost about 250 US at an aftermarket price. If you want to go all in and get the artisans, it could cost you about 100 to 120 US a piece, at least for these artisans. The total cost for this build, excluding the soldering equipment and the lubes, is at 775 US. It's a lot for a keyboard, but you can get away with cheaper keycaps and a cheaper switch because the switches and keycaps alone cost about 490 US. But with cheaper options, you can build it for less than 400 US in total. Now this experience definitely taught me how your costs can add up to this hobby if you're not too careful. So be very mindful of the stuff you include on your build. Overall, I'm completely satisfied with the build. The feel of this keyboard and the typing experience is just awesome. I like the build quality of the materials and how quiet it is. And the best part, the building experience. I honestly didn't realize I'll enjoy soldering as much as I did. And I think I did a pretty decent job for a first timer. I'd love to record another build again. So if you guys have any keyboard you'd love for me to work on, comment down below. You can reach me on any of my social media handles. As always, I've placed the links where I purchased the items and some of the video references I came across in building this mech. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button and support my channel. If you'd love to see more content or videos like this, let me know in the comments below. Again, I'm Arvin Gray and thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.